the DA is at this point in time uh, deliberating on matters of policy and the issue that uh, Mzwandi Lembeja, Criselda Lewis, our colleagues have just discussed now in relation to the invasion of uh, Ukraine by Russia has uh, just been uh, discussed by plenary here at the Congress. In fact, it's one of the resolutions that is still up on the board there on the screens that speaks and is titled the DA condemns the illegal invasion and occupation of Ukraine by the Russian Federation. The Congress has now basically resolved and that it supports and defends Ukraine against the illegal invasion that it is currently facing by the Russian Federation with Congress and that particular motion being seconded by Kubis Mere after it was proposed by the, the, the federal executive chairperson of the DA, which is Mr. Ivan Mayor. But I'm going to bring in Mr. Kubis here. Uh, I've got the horn, the horn rather, to speak on the issues pertaining to the various resolutions that were discussed yesterday. Mr. Horn, just the issue of voting yesterday, particularly on that proposal of including a federal deputy leader of the DA. What transpired there? Because you had to vote twice on that particular motion. Yes. So in terms of our federal constitution, um, any amendment to the constitution itself must be supported by two-thirds of the delegates that registered and arrived on the day of Congress in order for it to be to pass. So when, when there's more or less unanimous uh, adoption or support or rejection, it's quite easy uh, looking at the cards and making the determination. But in terms of that specific proposal, it was quite clear that there was a, a split in the in the opinion amongst uh, delegates uh, so the, the the cards were, were counted there was a, 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 a sort of an a, a opinion expressed that some delegates maybe voted both in favor and a, against the proposal in the first round so there was a revote and ultimately it was determined that I think in the first round 850 people voted in uh, 57 people voted in favor of the proposal and in the second round 850. Now that fell short of the two-thirds uh, majority which by, uh, based on the registration figures was a, about 1,150. Uh, so it was well short of that, uh, that uh, marker and therefore the, the uh, proposed resolution to include a deputy federal leader did not pass. Why was there such a close split between those in favor and those against this particular motion? It was a previous contentious issue, particularly with the previous uh, uh, DA leader contender and former DA member Mbalintuli raised this issue of a uh, deputy leader of the party. Why was there such a close contestation on this issue and why did it cause so much confusion? Yeah, so it is a proposal that, that more or less is now standard on, on every agenda of, of every federal congress. So the proposal is, has been brought to the last three federal congresses. Uh, it more or less reaches a, a 50 percent plus something support in every congress, but never the two-thirds threshold that is required. And it, I think it's an indi indication that in some circles uh, within the party, uh, there is this idea that that uh, a deputy leader can add value, whilst other members, uh, of course, feel, I think, as has been the, the arguments raised in the debates beforehand, that it, uh, there's always this danger of creating two centers of power, which will, can lead to divisions within the, uh, the party. So I think those are the two, I, I would say, considerations for the for the uh, uh, that informs the split and it's interesting that that split is there but uh, it, it would seem the the support for the deputy federal leaders is not really gaining uh, momentum between from the one congress to the next mr varnohon on to raise an issue particularly on voting now what has transpired with voting? Are you done with voting? Is counting already underway? How far are you with the process? Yeah, so voting um, has uh, finished. The presiding officers came on stage, I think, just after nine to announce that 98% of those who registered, arrived and registered, has cast their ballots. So that would be more or less 1,650 delegates who have then between 6 and 8.30, I believe, this morning voted via the OPA vote, the electronic voting system we use. Um, uh, the, the 
they are about to go into lockdown with either the candidates or their agents to now start the, I, I want to say, the count or the tabulation of the outcomes. Um, uh, hopefully for, for us, uh, and not for you guys as the media, they will all be sworn to secrecy and, and, the, and in terms of the, the, the program of the day, the announcement will be made, I think, at about 1.30. Mr. Horn, when you're looking at the voting patterns, what, what, what will be the clear indicator? What can we look out for when those results are finally announced? You are an expert with, of the DA's uh, electoral system and how it works and how you do the counting. How, how is it going to fare, particularly knowing that particularly when there are more contenders for positions like that of the deputy chairperson, the votes are then staggered on the number of votes that people get on first preferences, second preferences and third preferences. Can you just enlighten our viewers on how it will finally be tallied out. Yeah, so look, uh, in terms of the federal leader position with two candidates, of course, a simple first past the post. Uh, but in terms of the deputy uh, federal chair positions and the deputies to the chair of the federal council, I think both have about eight candidates and there's three positions available. So as you indicate, uh, we use a, a uh, single transferable vote system, which then if nobody reaches uh, a sufficient number of first choices to get them elected, in the first round, those who receive the, the, the fewest number of first choices, they, the, the second choices of those delegates who put those candidates first are then transferred and in that way ultimately the, the three successful candidates is um, is uh, settled on. It is, a, I always say to people, it's a bit like Duckworth Lewis. Uh, which they use in cricket. It's a system that produces a result which some, sometimes people are not uh, convinced is, is the best outcome, but, but it is a system that enables us in a, in a big field of eight candidates to fairly quickly and efficiently uh, elect three successful candidates, otherwise you have to re-vote and re-vote and, and, uh, until ultimately they, uh, the, last, the last man or woman remains standing. Are you anticipating anyone disputing the results? We've heard Mpo Palazzi questioning this voting system that you currently have within the party and the electronic system. Yeah, well, I, I, I don't want to preempt. Uh, in terms of our internal rules, any candidate has 30 days after an election to lodge an objection. What we also typically do is to, to, get, uh, to distribute to all can candidates in the week after the, the election and the Congress the raw data so that they can uh, they can run the, the, the votes or filter the votes into the system themselves, double check whether the, the outcome was indeed what it should have been and then of course there's, uh, there's other grounds on which candidates may also object. I, I can't uh, preempt as to whether uh, any candidate will lodge an objection. I, uh, from what I observed this morning, it was a, a, a fairly a calm situation um, at the hall. Um, there was not no, no um, let's say, uh, campaigning going on anymore. So it was very well disciplined. Um, so sometimes those issues lead to objections afterwards, but there was nothing to be seen of to that effect this morning. You had to rein in delegates uh, yesterday evening after a disparaging message on John Steen Hazen was sent out. What truly transpired with uh, those disparaging messages? It's the first of its kind of the DA where you've got this much slinging, one may say, between candidates. Yeah, look, um, it was a decision the presiding officers um, took. Um, uh, maybe they would... Uh, be, it'd be better place to just explain their thought processes, but uh, as a delegate, I also received uh, their message, and, and yeah, uh, funnily enough, I didn't receive the first message, but then I, of course, looked, uh, went and looked for it, and I had a look at the message, and yes, uh, I understand the, the presiding officers felt that as negative campaigning is, is, is uh, uh, not allowed in terms of our standards of conduct that they they felt that they, they needed to, to say to delegates, please ignore any negative campaigning. It's, of course, their discretion which they exercise. Um, uh, uh, it's not my, in, within my purview to, to, to say uh, whether uh, ultimately it ha would have had an impact on, on the outcome or not.
for our international desk in the SABC, I'd just like to ask a few. I saw a resolution now that I spoke about earlier on when we started on Ukraine. What is the main thrust of the resolution on Ukraine? I, hear, I saw it was being proposed to plenary by Ivan Mayer and proposed and further endorsed by Kwebis Murray. Yeah, so it is a, a resolution which, which I think confirmed our stance as the DA that Russia is the aggressor in, in this war and that uh, uh, if and when we come into government we will change the stance of South Africa uh, on this war with our government, uh, well, uh, officially saying that they have a neutral stance but then of, of course in practice um, welcoming uh, the Russian minister to our shores is seemingly having invited President Putin to to visit South Africa. So the, the resolution was aimed to 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 express our our disagreement with with our government stance on on the way uh, uh, Russia has invaded Ukraine. Thank you very much, Mr. V Mr. V Mr. Horn, the Verna Horn, speaking to us on this uh, Congress and the voting patterns that will be taking place, and also that voting has been concluded. It's now up to the presiding officers to go up and count those votes with the representatives of the candidates or the candidates themselves, and they will be sworn to secrecy. And the results late announced later on this afternoon at about half past one, two o'clock on who is the new federal leader of the Democratic Alliance alongside the entire leadership composition of the organization, the official opposition in South Africa's body politics.